What would happen if you put two sailors in a workshop and told them to build a van? This. So one of those sailors happens to be a shipwright. We're using all of his cool skills usually reserved for super yachts to build something seriously unique. Today we're kicking off the build and creating a van interior normally only found on the fanciest of yachts in the world. So grab a beer and see what happens. So it's pretty cool that we're using solid woods for this. I think it's not common to see many vans built with solid woods. It's because of weight ton. But walnut isn't too bad. This is a piece of American black walnut. It's not traditionally a boat building timber, which I'm used to using, but it's commonly used in furniture making and it's beautiful. It's this wonderful black color when it's done, which I think is going to look great in a van. Took a bit of sourcing to get a little bit of what's known as quarter sawn on it. And the reason I wanted that quarter sawn area is because we're going to bend it um, around this jig. Now, what you'd normally do would be steam something and it would bend around that no problem. But walnut, doesn't like to steam. What we're going to do is a bent lamination bend. So I'm going to cut these down to about one to two millimeters and see if we can get it go around the bends. So I think what we'll end up doing is steaming the one or two millimeter pieces of wood and stacking them up. Now, given the traditional boat building heritage that <laughs> we have here, we're going to be doing this all by hand. Okay, so we're about ready to start steaming this. Forgive the noise, Scotland's doing what it's doing and it's raining. So I've got this taped together with like these tongue depressors to give a gap between them. I don't know if you can see that. But basically, um, we're gonna put it in here. This is something we came up with a long time ago now. When we were traveling, you know, between boatyards, we didn't have room to carry a great big uh, steam box all the time. So we now just put it in this plastic bag. And this is basically just a, uh, one of those sort of vacuum pack food bags that you pick up from Amazon, super cheap. And it's like literally a 20 euro, 25 pound or something, I don't know. Um, super cheap wallpaper steamer from Amazon that we're using. It's really, really simple. So this, the idea of these is we get the steam in between the wood. We'll steam it in here for about 15, 20 minutes and then see if we can bend it around the former. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how confident I feel about this. But we'll see how we get on. We should be confident, but not for some reason. I think it's because it's so cold. Is that even going to fit in here? No. Oh, no. Right, we need to adjust them on an angle. And of course, we don't have much in the way of tools in here, honestly, like that, not a huge amount. Uh, so we're using the saw as a, as a bench. Probably better benches to have in the world, but I quite like this one. Can you go in there, matey? So once this is in, I'll put a cable tie around the end, not to stop everything, but I want the bag to inflate with steam. I don't want it to be just pouring out the end. Okay, we've got that in there. Whoop, you stay on there, buddy. There we go, she's starting to go droopy already. Thing is, these things are so small that 
you know, we actually risk oversteaming them even at just 10, 15 minutes. If you oversteam something, it gets brittle. Now, this is by no means the only way to steam something. There's loads of ways to do it, and I don't know which way other people like to do it, but I mean, you can get away even without hot steam. You can do it with ammonia under pressure, uh, if that's the kind of thing you're into, but this works well for us. We've used it, I don't know how many times now, and it seems to have worked most times. I'm a bit nervous about this one in particular because it's walnut and walnut doesn't like to go around bends. Um, and it's so cold. I mean, it, it's been snowing here today again and obviously there's no heating in this shed. So, you know, it's effectively coming out of the steamer and we don't have much working time to get it into the jig and clamped up. So the idea is we clamp it up in the jig and then we leave that overnight and then we'll do the gluing process tomorrow because I, I think we're going to be hard pressed to get it to to get it all glued up and steamed and all sorts in one shot so yeah we'll give that some time what's that now set that for another 15 minutes or something 10 minutes time for a cup of tea maybe quickly we go quick as we can put the sticks off there we go. Okay, so tap that on the end. We should have them level. Okay. Alright. You hold that there for me, please. Just grab just hold them like that. I'll stretch them in there like that. Right Hold, please. Right. Well, that wasn't probably the best clamp up that we've ever had, but it wasn't too bad. At the end of the day, it's so cold in here, you know. I think it's you can hear it's raining, so it's not snowing. That's a good thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, we've got there. We're okay. One piece is standing proud here. That's actually because it's taller than the rest. I should have probably trimmed it down, but I didn't want to put it through the cheap old um, saw blade that we've got because it would probably split it being only two mil thick. Anyway, it's there, it's done, and we're going to leave that in the clamps overnight. We might even leave it a bit longer, and it should hold that shape, which will make the gluing up so much easier because the glue acts like a lubricant. Perfect. Get on with that in the morning. Right, tea. This is the rowboat, called the rowboat because we're building it like a boat inside. And why does that matter to anybody who's interested in boats or sail hub for that matter? Well, basically we're building a boat and we haven't been on the tools for a while doing interior stuff. This has given us the perfect opportunity to, number one, get our hands back in, do some traditional boat building stuff, show you guys how we do that without having any fancy tools in the workshop. And third thing, which I'm really excited about is it gives us a chance to test some stuff as well which is kind of what the Heart of Sail Hub's all about. So on that note, I'm really keen to quickly show you some of the gear that we're installing in the van. So some of you may know that Chris and I sort of document tech and innovation at boat shows on this channel. And that's just because basically it's what ticks our boxes. It's what makes us tick. And I'm a product developer. And so that passion doesn't stop here. The boat is going to be such a great platform to do some really in-depth testing, product development, and of course the van is just the start of all that, like a pre-trial. So some of the stuff that we've already got here. First off are these pilot hatches from Lumar. Now, these are pretty innovative in themselves, but super simple. And I think the main thing that's exciting is they're using the racing hardware, like their track system to function basically. And this hatch slides like this rather than goes up and down. Um, that's just a really cool concept using their hardware from other parts of the boat. Then in here we have oh, the Wallace Viking hot water heater. So, I mean, it just looks cool, <laughs> but this is there's just so much innovation in here. They've managed to like half the power and fuel consumption for this. Um, and then paired with their 
Another piece of great engineering there is Square Calorifier. It's hot water on demand. I mean, yes, please. So really looking forward to um, getting that installed and all up and running. And then something else from Wallace. So Wallace is a, um, a marine brand. So this is all uh, marine variety, basically, which means we can take it anywhere we want. I'm not even going to take this out of the box because it's like the, the cleanest, shiniest, smartest thing we've got in here. So this is the XE Duo from, from Wallace. I'll lift it up actually. And what it is, is it's a cooker and heater combined, but there's no gas. That's the great thing here, no gas. And it, so you, you cook on the top and then there's a blow heater. Uh, when you fold it down, it comes out here. I mean, it's just all really cool innovation, but the best thing about this is they've engineered it to work with fossil free diesel why they still call it diesel generally in this in the industry i don't know but fossil free diesel is a real winner for us because as you know the boat we're building we are really pushing for sustainability and natural fuels etc so this is a really great start to that project and i just can't wait to get it all installed and get some testing started so we've uh, we finished this now or pretty much we've just got to do the final fittings She's been routed out and make it like nice and pretty and one thing and another. And on the back, we've got a series of routings going on. So this is for the, uh, the plywood flooring. This one is where the upstand will go, which is here. And then this is for a bit of bling where the uh, LEDs are going to go, or the neon lights as they call them. This would be pretty sweet. This is the, the upstand which I'm working on now. Okay, so this is basically, again, piece of walnut. We're going to do a totally different style of bending because it's just one sheet. She's a bit thicker. Uh, and I know I won't be able to bend it around these tight radiuses. So what I'm going to do is something called curve cutting. So basically what that means is we run saw cuts along the back where I wanted to go around this bend and this bend and so on and so forth. And they'll go so deep, meaning that the actual bit that's going to bend is about two millimeters, similar size to this. Just going to um, mark out the, uh, the curves, super simple technique. I know that the edge of my jig is like the edge of my panel where this line is. So I'm just going to go there, say so that's where I'm going to start it. So I'm just marking with a pencil where I'm starting my curves and finishing them. There's a proper technique you can use for all this. And that kind of makes sense to use one of those techniques because getting the right amount of curves means that the curves touch on the inside as well, which gives you a lot more strength. I'm not that bothered about this for this particular job. But the reason for that is that this material is going to get very thin where the curves are cut and I want to make sure that it's strong so basically I'm going to fill them all with a thickened epoxy anyway to make sure it's at its strongest point because where it's going to be someone's going to kick it with their hoofs every time they get in and out so I want this to be strong so I'm not bothered about the curves we're going to make it strong with epoxy so I've got my marks on here and basically they're the same so that's the start there and that's the finish of the first one and that's the start and that's the finish. And we'll call that the front. No surprise to any woodworker, we've had to make another jig, which is on the floor down here. So that's ready to go now, and I don't have a male part to it, or the piece which presses in, because I, to be honest with you, I'm lazy, and I don't want to have to build another whole jig up for this job. So we're going to just use this. So same thing as before, we're going to steam it in place, but this time we're using the curve cutting method, and we'll, we'll get onto that just now.
or super floppy. Or black. Okay, so this has been in overnight in the clamps and she's still going to bounce around a bit uh, and what we're going to do today is the epoxy in. So I'm, I'm using this mix of this stuff here, this is, um, this is called Entropy. Entropy resin is like an, epo an epoxy. It's quite cool because it's got a two to one mix ratio, I like that because it's easier to guarantee a good mix. But the beauty of it is it's a bioresin. It might not be the, the most bio-friendly, bio but the point is it is a bioresin and that's what's really cool about it. Um, I'm going to coat this on the back side. And the reason I'm going to do that is because this is a single piece of wood. There's no lamination and it's unlike the step where the lamination is. Those laminations prevent deformation as the wood takes on moisture. And I don't really want to take up a load of space by having a thick laminate where my step is. I want as much step area as I can. So what I'm going to do to prevent the timber from taking on moisture is effectively coat the back of this in epoxy. And then round these parts here where the kerf is, I'm going to put them in with um, thickened epoxy. So I'm going to use some microfibers. I'm going to use a little bit of silica in there as well, which I find just helps make it a little bit stronger. At least that's what I find. As a boat builder, this is a really good place for me to sort of use my creativity, I guess. And the skill set that we've all got as boat builders, it's really exciting to be able to actually put the time into doing laminated bends and steam bending wood. And, you know, we're even going to strip plank this. The, the boat's been inspired by the Spirit 72. So for me, this is an opportunity where there's no budget involved from a client, so we can just go crackers. Uh, so we'll go wild and do the best that we can in, in the time space that we have, really. I'm really excited. So this for me is super interesting, being able to use like modern materials with traditional techniques. And I think we're so lucky to be able to use like beautiful timbers in a way that harnesses the what we've got here with modern materials, it works really well. Now I'm not going to go too much into fiberglass here or anything like that, or, or epoxy work and stuff like that, because there's loads of people talking about that right now. If you do want to know more about cool ways to laminate up, be it fiberglass or just what materials to use where, I think a really good guy to have a look at in the marine world, or even in the van world, if that's your thing really, is a guy called Matt from the Duracell project. He's been rebuilding this like really, really cool open 60 race boat uh, that was originally called Duracell, hence the name of his channel. And he's doing it in such a cool way because he's basically rebuilding it for cruising it. But another boat builder, really switched on guy, a lot of good knowledge there. So if you want to know what to use where and all that kind of stuff, I mean, we'll go into it at some point for sure. But, you know, when we get onto our boat build, we'll talk about all that when we get into that state. But he's um, definitely covered it all at the moment. So yeah, definitely go check Matt out and let's see what he's up to. That's going to be quite cool, this is. So at this point, the parcel tape won't bond to the epoxy, which is super important because what we don't want to happen at this point is the wood get glued to the jig. Um, that would be really bad. So this parcel tape is a bit like a, a release tape. It's often called flash release tape because you pay a lot of money for it to be called flash release tape. But yeah, the stuff I use from Marine Industrial, pound a roll or something like that, it's really good. So yeah, that's just gonna stop it getting stuck to the mold, which is good. Okay, so, leave that overnight. I wake up in the morning in this great blue state, golden fingers. Caress my face Slips through the window On a silky breeze A dreamer's life To plant some seed She's my believer He 
Even all my doubts A lighted mirror Reflecting out Every true potential A bedrock belief In a library plot To set this bird free From every element of fate Every color that's attached She makes pictures blue and green And I release them to the sea For the ancient memories Just as fleeting as a breeze She makes pictures blue and green And I release them to the sea Sunset, white cotton June, her body sings, and I join the tune of the sirens calling. The crows leave their trees, but a peace pervades us. I am stoked with the outcome of this step. I mean, check it out. I cannot wait to get these LEDs installed. This was such a big job, all that lamination, all the planning, but it's really worked out. And I think it's definitely worthy of being called a companionway in a super yacht. <laughs> Next to it, we're gonna have a teak inspired deck floor, <laughs> uh, but it's not plastic. So stay tuned to see what that is. And we're gonna be testing it in the van in the hope that it's going to be good enough for our boat. Now, if you don't know about our boat, check out this video from the other week. We are building a boat. It's currently in Switzerland and we are pushing towards it being fully electric. Huge project. And this is just the start of it. Somewhere to live whilst we build the boat. Next week, we are going to be working with this stuff and Chris is going to be building something similar to this, a curved bulkhead, but it's six foot tall, it's massive. This is gonna be our heads, our shower, toilet. Um, it's gonna be a big job. We're then gonna veneer it like this is huge. Pretty ambitious, a lot to ask, but I've got the confidence in them. Um, so stay tuned, like and subscribe so you can see what's coming up next. I would love you to be along in this journey in the build up to the boat. And until then, I don't know. <laughs>